the, the universal theory of language yeah by ted gibson <laughs> is uh <laughs> that you can form dependency you can form trees from any sentences and that's right you can measure the distance in some way of those dependencies and then you can say that uh most languages have very short dependencies all languages all languages all languages have short dependencies you can actually measure that so uh I, I, an ex-student of mine, this guy's at um, University of California, Irvine, Richard Futrell did a thing a bunch of years ago now, where he looked at all the languages we could look at, which was about 40 initially, and now I think there's about 60, for which there are dependency structures. Like you, So there are meaning there's got to be like a big text, a bunch of texts which have been parsed for their dependency structures. And there's about 60 of those which have been parsed that way. And for all of those, um, you can... What what he did was take any um, any sentence in one of those languages, and uh, and you can do the dependency structure, and then start at the root. We we're, we're talking about dependency structures. That's pretty easy now, and and he's trying to figure out what a control way you might say the same sentence is in that language. And so we just just like all right, there's a root, and it has let's say as the sentence is. Um, let's go back to you know two dogs entered the room. And so mm-hmm. entered is the root, and entered has. Um, two dependents. It's got dogs and it has room. Okay, and what he does is like let's scramble that order. That's mm-hmm. three things: the root and the, the the head and the two dependents, and into some random order, mm-hmm. just random, and then just do that for all the dependents down the tree. So now look, do it for the and whatever was two and dogs and for uh, and room, and and that's you know that's not a, it's a very short sentence. When sentences get longer and you have more dependents, there's more scrambling that's possible. And what he found was so that so so that that's one you could figure out one scrambling for that sentence. He did this like a hundred times for every sentence in every corp in every one of these texts, every corpus, and and then he just compared the dependency lengths in those random scramblings to what actually happened, what what, what the the English or the French or the German was in the in original language or Chinese or what all these like eighty lang- no sixty languages, okay, and and the dependency lengths are always shorter in the real language mm-hmm. compared to the to the, these this kind of a control and there's another. He, it's a, it's a little more rigid his control. So um, the the way I described it, you could have crossed dependencies like the, mm-hmm. by by scrambling that way. You could scramble in any way at all. Um, languages don't do that. They tend not to cross dependencies very much. Like so, the dependency structure they just they tend to keep things uh, non crossed. And there's a you know they, there's a technical term they call that projective, but it's just non crossed is all that is projective. And so if you just constrain the the scrambling so that it only gives you projective sort of non non cross is the same thing holds so it's so the you still still human languages are much shorter uh, than these this kind of a control so there's like it, what it means is that 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 we're in every language we're trying to put things close in, in, in relative to this kind of a control like there, it doesn't matter about the word order some of these are verb final some of them use a verb medial like English and some are even verb initial there are a few languages of the world which have VSO world order word order verb subject object languages oh, I haven't talked about those it's like ten percent yeah. of the and even even in those languages, it it's matter. still short dependencies. Short dependencies is rules. Okay, so how what 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 are some possible explanations for that? The, uh, for why why languages have evolved that way? So that that's one of the um, I suppose disagreements you might have with Chomsky. So you consider the evolution of language in uh, in terms of information theory. Yeah, and uh, for you, the purpose. Of languages, ease of communication, right, and processing. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, the the story here is just about communication. It, it is just about production, really. It's about ease of production. Is the story? When you say production, can you? Can you oh, I just mean ease of language production. It's easier for me to say things yeah. when the com, I, what I'm doing whenever I'm talking to you is so somehow I'm formulating some idea in my head and I'm putting these words together, yep. and it's easier for me to do that. Uh, to put to say something where the words are close closely connected in a dependency as opposed to separated like by putting something in between and over and over again i it's just hard for me to keep that in my head it, like that's that's the whole story like the story it's basically it's like the, the dependency grammar sort of gives that to you like just like long long is bad short is good it's like easier to keep in mind because you have to keep it in mind for 
probably for production, pro- you know, probably matters in comprehension as well. Like also matters in comprehension. It's on both sides of yeah, the production yeah, yeah. and the. Uh... But I would guess it's probably evolved for production. Like it's about producing. It's what's easier for me to say that ends up being easier for you also. I, I, that's very hard to disentangle this idea of who is it for? Is it for me, the speaker, or is it for you, the listener? I mean, part of my language is for you. Like the way I talk to you is going to be different from how I talk to different people. Right? So I'm, I'm definitely angling what I'm saying to yeah. who I'm saying, right? It's not like I'm just talking the same way to every single person. And so I am sensitive to my audience, but how does that, does that you know, work itself out in the, in the dependency link differences? I don't know. Maybe that's about just the words, that part, you know, which words I select. My initial intuition is that you optimize language for the audience. Yeah. But, but it's, it's both. It's just kind of like messing with my head a little bit to say that some of the optimization might be, it may be the primary objective of the optimization might be the ease of production. Yeah, you, like, we have different senses, I guess. I'm I'm like very selfish. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I'm nah. like, I think it's like, it's all about me. I'm like, I'm just doing what's easiest for me well, at all times. I don't want to, I'm like, I'll, I mean, but I have to, of course, choose the words that I think you're going to know. I'm not going to choose words you don't know. In fact, I'm going to fix that when I, you know, so there it's about, but but maybe for for the syntax, for the combinations, it's just about me. I feel like it's, I, I don't know though. It's wait, very wait, hard. Wait, to, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. But the purpose of communication is to be understood, is Absolutely. to convince others and yes. so on. Yes. So like the selfish thing is to be understood. Okay, so it's yeah, about, it's, 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 about it's a little circular there too then. Okay. Right. I mean, like yeah, uh, yeah. the ease of production. Helps, that, that helps cannot, me be understood then. I don't think it's circular. So I no, want. I think the primary. I, I think the primary objective is to be understood is about the listener, because otherwise, the if you're optimizing to for the ease of production, then you're you, you're not going to have any of the interesting complexity of language. Like you're trying to like. Well, explain. let's control for what it is I want to say. Like right. I, I'm saying, right. let's control for the thing, the the message. Control for the message. But that I means want to the message you. needs to be understood. That's the goal. Oh, uh, but that's the meaning. So I'm still talking about the form. The form. I, just Got the it. form of the meaning. How do I frame the form of the meaning is all I'm talking about. You're mm-hmm. talking about a harder thing, I think. It's like, how am I <laughs> like trying to change the meaning? Let's, con- let's keep oh, the right. meaning constant. Like which- it. Got it. If you keep the meaning constant, how can I phrase whatever it is I need Got to it. say? Like I got to pick the right words and I'm going to pick the order so that it's, so it's easy for me. You know, that's, 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 that's what I think is probably I, like. I think I'm still tying meaning and form yeah. together in my head. Mm-hmm. But you're saying if you keep the meaning of yeah. what you're saying constant, yeah. what the optimization, yeah, it could be the primary objective of that optimization is the, for production. That's interesting. I'm, I'm struggling to keep constant the meaning it's just so, I mean, I'm, I'm such a, I'm a human, right? So for me, the form, without having introspected on this, the form and the meaning are tied together, like, deeply. Because I'm a human. Like, for, for me, when I'm speaking, because I haven't thought about language, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like, in a rigorous way, about the form of language. But look, for any event, there's, there's an... You know, unbounded. I don't. I don't want to say infinite, but sort of unbounded you know, ways of that I might communicate that same event. This two dogs entered a room. I can say in many, many different ways. I can mm-hmm. say, "Hey, there's two dogs. They entered the room. Hey, the room was entered by something. The thing that was entered was two dogs. I mean, there's. I mean, that's kind of awkward and weird and stuff. But those are all similar messages <laughs> mm-hmm. with different f- forms, but different ways I might frame. And of course. I use the same words there all the time. I could have referred to the dogs as, you know, a Dalmatian and a poodle or something. You know, I I could have been more specific or less specific about what they are, and I could have said, been more abstract about 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 the number. There's like so I like I'm trying to keep the meaning, which is mm-hmm. this event, constant. And then how am I going to describe that to get that to you? It kind of depends on what you need to know, right? And what I think you need to know. But I'm like trying to let, let's get control for all that stuff and not uh, and and it's like I'm just like choosing but I'm doing something simpler than you're doing which is just forms yes <laughs> just so, words so to you yeah. specifying yeah. the species uh, the the breed of dog and whether they're cute or not is changing the meaning that might be yeah yeah that would be changing oh that would be changing the meaning for sure right so you're just yes. yeah well, yeah yeah that's changing the meaning but say even if we keep that constant we can still talk about what's easier or hard for me right the listener and the and the Right. I can, like, I, I, which I, phrase I, structures I use, which combinations, which, you know. This is so fascinating. And just like a, 
uh, a really powerful window into human language. But I wonder still throughout this, th how vast the gap between meaning and form. I just, I just have this like, maybe romanticized notion that they're close together, that they evolve close, like hand in hand. That you can't just simply optimize for one without the other being in the room with us. <laughs> like it's uh, well, it's kind of like an iceberg. Form is the tip of the iceberg, and the rest, the the meaning is the iceberg. But you can't like separate. But I think that's why these large language models are so successful is because they, they're good at form and form isn't that hard <laughs> in some sense. <laughs> and meaning is tough still. And that's why they're not, they're, you know, they don't understand what they're doing. We're going to talk about that later maybe, but uh, like we can distinguish in our, forget about large language models, like humans, we're, maybe you'll talk about that later too, is like the difference between language, which is a communication system and thinking, which mm -hmm. is meaning. So language is a communication system for the meaning. It's not the meaning. And so that's why, I mean, that, and there's a lot of interesting evidence we can talk about rele relevant to that.